it's the biggest technology that's ever happened in the history of life outside of things like fucking fire and like the printing press is the one that I keep going back to. Television, phone, fine, but this is like printing press 10.0. Yeah. Every piece of our life is Every, changed. It, correct. You got your perspective. I just want to be happy. Don't you want to be happy? Guys, I'm here with Gary V, <laughs> the famous Gary V for this episode of Next with Novo. So Gary, what did you think? We freaking met with Michael Rubin on yep. the All In Challenge. Yes. And I was kind of blown away because I was like, God, who is this guy who just keeps talking and getting <laughs> shit done? And I know everything. I got it. I got it. I got it. So, And I showed up thinking, who are these people? <laughs> I love meeting people. Nothing's, you know, nothing's more fun than when you meet someone when you're trying to do good. You know, our our relationship will always be bounded by we met when we were taking enormous, I mean, I was spending 12 hours on that yeah. fucking thing in the beginning every day. And we raised 60 million dollars to help people get food during COVID and the people that donated got crazy shit. Being yeah. in movies, swag, it was cool. So full disclosure, you know, Michael Rubin started this thing. He brought in Gary, brought in Alan Tish and he asked me if I'd help him and it was the thing I've probably been the least successful at in my life. I had a ton of fun doing it. I was almost no help <laughs> but it was a ton of fun. But your mustache was epic. I had a great mustache. That I remember. And, and listen, to your point, like everybody had different roles, different things happen, to your point. There's many things I get involved in where the intent is the epic and sometimes it doesn't go exactly how I thought. But this is what I love about time. To your point, maybe the you going after super whales for big donations, first of all, that was hardcore Hail Mary. Right. B, you were saying things in meetings that helped the process. I think, you know, I think people sometimes spend too much time on thinking the output was the only KPI. Sometimes one person says one thing in one meeting yeah. and it matters. That's what I remember. I remember thoughtfulness. To and the honest. mustache. The mustache. The mustache was... is what I think about first. <laughs> but the thoughtfulness is definitely, like it helped. It, like you work through things with people, you think, you have conversations. Listen, we will look back at this combo in 80 years. I'll listen to it. 80, I'm not sure I'm going to make it that far. But 40 and I'll be like, wow, a lot of that was right. Oh shit, I really fucking didn't have that right. And that's fun. That's like, I just want people to be less scared. I, I don't think that many people feel that terrible for the three guys that went out of business. Now, listen. By the way, on the record, I do. I feel bad for somebody who went out of business. They were. Like, 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 they, I, they, I know nothing about They are that. stunningly wealthy guys. They are stunningly good investors. They will regroup and, and they'll live happily ever after. They're, they're but, but embarrassed. I think, but I actually they, think the They lost their investors uh, yeah, a ton but, of money. Listen, I think compassion and empathy is a, and sympathy is a required way to get back to a non-separating society. Uh, 100%. I, I'm, to your point, I, I don't know any, I don't know the names of any of them. Melvin, is that one? Thing? Melvin Capital. Is Good, right. And so there's humans underneath there, I'm sure, right? So I don't know, I don't know who the humans we're talking about are. Three of the best gener investors of the generation. Right, so I'm it. sure, that, to your point, they'll be fine. Yes. They have hard they got, assets. They, they can got liquidate. caught sleeping with giant short positions and never expected a hive of bees would come all at once. It's like the African bees are here. Yeah, that, and by uh, the way, by the way, that's just business. Yes. That's like them shorting the people. That, that's just business to me. What, what, what is interesting from an anthropological view, from a markets view, is that after that first push and you squeeze the shorts, then it became David versus Goliath. Then it became class warfare. Then it became generational warfare. You know, I had a conversation, very thoughtful combo last night. This is me just talking about the combo where the person didn't like, love, didn't like the leverage that some people played to stop it from a tech standpoint and an infrastructure standpoint but loved what Facebook and Twitter did to stopping other voices. Oh yeah. So like to me, the, there's a bigger question listen, here. Listen, AOC was fear for her, fearful for her life uh, in that Capitol. And, and every progressive said, this is horrible. I can't believe they attacked the Capitol. They put our lives at risk. When the mob was literally going after Wall Street, burn it down. It was a nihilistic mob. I mean, one of the guys, uh, you know, who's fun one out of business, got death threats. I put some neutral comments on and the vitriol that came at me on Twitter, and I'm kind of a crypto guy. I'm part of the, the progressive movement that's saying we need to remake things. And just because I was trying to like give the facts, well, I think, listen, death I, threats, I also, I also think anger. That, yeah, I also think- like, there, was I, a, there was a different energy I think than, that's a whole, than market That's energy. a whole different conversation. I think we live in a society where you can hide behind a keyboard and everyone's always tougher in 
and Miss Mod, you know, behind 100%. the veil, right? Like if you look at Whisper and Secret, which are historic social apps that a lot of people bet on that I didn't, it, it was, the reason I didn't bet on it is because everything I've done in my career is based on what I believe in humanity. And so I believe that Whisper and Secret were not gonna win because I believe that when you have anonymous, you get the worst version of people where, where they feel safe to express their hurt. So I'm not even mad at them. I'm not even mad at those people. I just know that's their safest place to share their internal hurt. And so I didn't and those platforms continue to not do well. As a matter of fact, the business models of all these anonymous platforms is to put hostage of the people, look at some of the, the you know, look at you know, Yelp and Glassdoor, like it's a very interesting ecosystem. So I think it's a fascinating conversation. Should everyone need a blue check? I kind of think so, but you know, that's, 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 yeah, I mean, that goes, I mean, listen, back to like you being a crypto guy from Wall Street, I'm a social media guy who wants every metric hidden. I don't want followers shown, I don't want blue checks. I just think it's gonna be healthier for people. I'm good, I'm good when I suck, I'm good when I blue checked, I'm good when I'm Gary Vee right now. Well, if I, I say make, blue check because then you know who the guy is. Oh, uh, yeah. So we listen, don't have the, we, so we yeah, don't I have Yeah, I mean, like, that was my big, it was funny. I loved Facebook when it first came out because I'm like, cool. People can't hide like they do on like early stuff like, you know, and, and that lasted for a while and then it was the opposite and now everything's privacy and that's fine. Listen, I just think it's, I think it's great. I think it's progress. I really do. I think that there's incredible progress going on. My biggest fear is the regulation of the internet itself. Yeah. I think we're making tremendous progress. There's incredible thoughtfulness. I really believe it plays out in a level place where merit and good stuff. I, I'm happy about everything that's going on while being very conscious that the inner, what will likely lead this, I think you've got both sides of conservative and progressive movements willing to regulate the shit out of the American internet without realizing what that actually means. I think we're dangerously close. No, it won't. Listen, well, I mean, but, I mean, but I, it was funny. We had this beautiful inauguration. Amanda Gordon gives this poem. Everyone yep. I know had a tear in their yep. eye. It was like, ah, normalcy. And two days later, we have Occupy Wall Street. Yeah, but I, don't, but I, think, I think two days later, you have actual capitalism. I actually disagree yeah. with that. I, let me rephrase. I, that's not what I disagree with because I understand where you're coming from. I take a different angle at it. I actually think two days later, we had true capitalism. I loved it. Yeah, there I, was, listen, I don't think anybody. Uh, let me phrase for context for everybody's yeah. listening to the point of the buying. To be frank, I'm so undereducated on Citadel's relationship with Robin Hood. I, I actually am so basic that I don't even know how this all works, meaning why they had the leverage of like the bids go through them and the trading. Like, I don't know it. Literally, I don't know. Right. So I come here, you know, very authentic. Like, I don't know if, like, the, because I also know, correct me if I'm wrong, Novo. It wasn't just a Robin Hood, E-Trade and the others also halted it because I guess the thing above the thing stopped it and they all get affected by it. The Clearinghouse. The Clearinghouse, You, you have Thank to have you. enough money to support the Clearinghouse and the SEC said, whoa, this is growing so fast. These banks aren't well, ca these trading entities, right, right. Robin, don't have enough capital, regulatory capital, yep. And, and so you gotta slow yeah, down until you get so, more regulatory and so here, capital. Here becomes the That's fair regulation, and here's we, what's we awesome. want regulation. Here's what I don't, here's what I don't think people are, are um, educated enough about. People are always like, this game is rigged. I'm like, take a step back. You can re-rig the next game. What do I mean by that? What, what, people cry about what they can't do, but don't focus on what they can do. For example, people can decide in their companies that they don't wanna do the 401k. They don't have to support it. They can buy, they can not put money in the market. You could go buy, like, buy take, the, take the money out. Buy something, look what's going on with, <laughs> we don't, blockchain, you know, NFTs, my favorite one of everything that's happening, sports cards, which then means comic books, toys, paintings, tchotchkes, cars, watches, like, shit can, ch ch I, I laugh at people's naivete on how basic this combo is. That same group, can have 20,000 people decide that these sneakers are interesting. Look at these cool kicks I got. You know what I mean? So like, like, I, like what's happening is the acceleration of supply and demand and cultural norms. So to me, because it's Wall Street, there's a little bit of like fuck that shit. Well, there's way more fuck that shit going on. Wait, so, till, wait till college gets its day. But, but so what's- Novo, real quick. Oh, I'll, college is gonna get crushed. College is a fucking joke. <laughs> No, really, come on. I'm, I know people think like, because I was a bad, no, kids are getting hurt. 
People are like mad that they like lost a couple, like 40 bucks on Listen. Wall Street on a trade. I'm like, you're $73,000 in debt for we a have, piece of paper that gives you dick. We have 4,400 colleges in America, 4,400 colleges. That's probably 3,400 too many. I mean. Brother, they're charging full price right now for fucking Zoom classes that are, if they listen to this podcast, they'll learn more about in an hour than the entire semester of that dog shit they get at the state university. Yeah, no, it's, it is interesting. We, we, we pass this myth that you need to go to college to do well in life. Everyone believes in the story. We haven't. What? We're not past that myth. No, we, 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 we created Oh, passed on, I'm sorry. Passed on this myth. Yes, right? we did. Yes, and therefore, if you're a parent, if you're a student, you think, I'm not good unless I go to college. And then the economics say, well, geez, if you look, a college graduate does a lot better than a non-college graduate. And so we're in this transition. Big right? one. A big transition, I agree. This, one, this one's gonna fall hardest. Yeah, and the pyramid's gonna go like this as opposed to Correct. like this. That one's gonna be fascinating to watch. And I, by the way, on the record, for people that follow me, zero pleasure, zero. I don't have anything against NC State. I have no feelings towards Michigan. I don't have any ill will towards Yale. And even, I think Yale and a couple other brands survive because of brand, but I have sadness and compassion in my heart for the enormity, to the point where people believe that the government should be, I'm like, fuck that. You made a decision. What about accountability? You decided to go. Like, you didn't have to. Well, yeah, but again, people often aren't in control of their own decisions. These stories are so powerful. And everyone's saying, your kid's gotta go to school or you're a terrible parent. And so they sacrifice yes, their life yes, to send the kid to school. If we go by what everybody says, then like, I mean, like now you're getting into the, the truth of it all. The truth of it all. Self-esteem, self-awareness, insecurity. Like, I, I wish the whole country had gotten to this self-introspection, self-awareness, self. It can. Sometimes all the carnage and all the disruption leads to it. Yeah. I'm sitting pretty like, if we can just hold our breath. I mean, the thoughtfulness of convos that are going on right now is incredibly good. That I it's agree with. Well, good. That's the punchline. That's how change happens. That's how, in, but, but let there be no confusion. Humans will always have self-interest. Like this, this, this nobleness makes me laugh. Like there's not a fucker listening to this or in the eight billion of us walking around that doesn't have a human shortcoming. And so when you pick on one person for being too about that money, somebody else is pissing on you because you're fucking terrible for the environment. Or if you're talking about this, you're, you're, you're great on black rights, but you're horrible on transgen. Or you're this, like, like this. We have to get thoughtful about giving some people for, like we're, we're suffocating people's ability to say I'm sorry and yeah, to we, say I need to figure this out. We definitely don't do sorry well in this country. At we're all. atrocious at atrocious. it. Atrocious. I love sorry. I love I suck. I'm serious. It's good. There's, a, there's another piece to this though. So yesterday, right, I'm on CNBC and I'm telling people, listen, if you... We're lucky enough to be one of the early smart guys that started the short squeeze, great. But now you're working people into this lather. Because you're talking about economics. Get, I'm talking about economics. I know. And you're sucking people in. I got a call from a good friend of mine who I've been trying to mentor. He's like, dude, I just bought some of this stock. Put $100,000 in to, to uh, AMC. And I was like, what price? He's like, 17. I was like, sell it immediately. You know, went down to seven the next day. Uh, I was like, so it's dangerous when the crowd no, whips no, no, up people no, no. into a it's, frenzy. It's actually not dangerous. I actually well, because think- people are losing, they're gonna, a lot of people are gonna lose a lot of money here, that they don't but, have But to that's lose. important to happen, because merit matters. No, no, I look at it like this. Parents over coddle kids. It's good for the kid to skin their knee. I don't want John from Reddit to lose money, but John's a big boy. Like John made a decision, this is back to college. Like, made a decision. Fuck the system, or, by the way, I, I'm very good at reading things, like this is what I do for a living. 90% of them had nothing to do with fuck anything other than fuck, I can make some money. Promise. Yeah, yeah, the enormity of people that were going in were like, wait a minute, can I make a quick little, they're the same people that bought Bitcoin and Ethereum or baseball, or Michael Jordan, they're all looking for angles. There was an incredible amount of American capitalism that was going on. Everybody's actually. paying attention to like, they're gonna burn down the 88 year old white billionaire, fine, cool, and there is some of that. But let me promise you something. The person that is the most noble and hates Wall Street the most didn't put their life fortune into AMC. They might have bought 50 to make themselves feel good. But people did what they did for themselves. Most people did it because they wanted to make money. And the people that got caught going up and now are caught and lost 1800 bucks, they're not gonna play so fast next time. 
Right? Uh, that's all true. But that's, that's all that's true. That's real though. That's how. That, I, this is what I keep going down to. Five point three billion guy. Anti. Re- you're anti paternalism. <laughs> I'm 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 anti overreactionism. Five point three billion dollar guy. You you educated me. I didn't know. You're gonna be okay. Like it's a hey big L. Fucking yeah. sucks. You're gonna be okay. Eighteen hundred dollar John from Reddit loss with four thousand in savings. Big L. Yeah. You're gonna be okay. And that and I believe in that shit, Novo. That's how I think humans still exist. We've had atomic bombs since the fifties. How the fuck are we still here? I think there's an underlining protectionism in the collective that happens with humans that we do not talk enough about. I really believe that. Uh, no, it's a big process. What are we talking about on this podcast? You know, this? we, we kind of talk about whatever we want to talk about. Like, Let's you know, talk the, about the, NFT. The, the, yeah, NFTs. My favorite new topic. I'm so obsessed too. I'm spending a ton of time on this. In so, my own brain. So for people that don't know what NFTs are, right? Non-fungible tokens. Uh, these are one of the great parts about the, uh, the whole uh, crypto blockchain. space, the blockchain space. Satoshi's white paper is that it was the first digital signature that you couldn't counterfeit. So think about what that means. You can make digital art that no one can counterfeit. And so all of a sudden, art gets its value uh, from scarcity. And so the blockchain allows you to do that. So now we're going to see artists for the first time ever create art digitally, right? The great artists. They never did before. Uh, so you're going to sell digital art. You're going to actually take your phone. You're going to buy it. It's going to go down your phone. You're going to walk home. And you're going to throw it up on a giant screen. And you're like, that's mine. No one else owns that thing. That's mine. And so we're going to have collectibles. They're going to create new collectibles. 100%. Right? There's going to be, instead of baseball cards that well, are- Well, there's NBA Top Shop. They're so rare. Top it's Shop's happening blowing already. up all yeah. of a sudden. I'm looking at it every uh, day. And so then there are going to be fractional things that get sold. Well, that's what's happening. The fractionalization of physical things is a game changer. The reason Michael Jordan's rookie card is going to a million dollars- Because you can sell 100 100- Copper Act. Yes. Because Kenny and, and Stefan actually want it. I know. They do. But they're not dropping three hundred fifty thousand on a single sports card. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. And I know. And I know them. But would they drop three hundred fifty bucks if they knew it was going to a million? That's no different than buying a little Tesla and Apple stock. The fractionalization of sports cards is going to get that market insane on the tippy tippy top. And so, and you're going to you're going to fractionalize jerseys. You're going to fractionalize cars. Correct. You're going to fractionalize all kinds. Yeah, of memorabilia things. is going to follow. But fast. even bigger than that are going to be these NFTs. You're going to have. Uh, I agree. The, the Super Bowl, we're going to have the, you know, Mahomes, and I'm going to have an artist do a painting, a digital painting of him, and a rapper, or, you know, sing a little song behind him, and then he's going to be up there, this, and you're going to sell that little clip from the Super Bowl done by Chase, Chase Hall or whoever the artist is, and people are going to be like, dude, there's only 10 of those, and they're going to buy them, and they're going to keep I them. think people need to know how to showcase them. Yeah. The, the missing piece, where, and it, just for the record, because I want to clip this one day and say, you know how I like to do my content. Yeah. In nine years, I'll clip this and be like, see, told you. You're 100% right, and in, in one other man's humble opinion. Why, why art works is high net worth individuals buy a piece of art, and whether they put it in a Moroccan you know, warehouse, or whether they put it in their Upper West Side uh, apartment, or whether they have a show, that they donate it to something, they're able to, you know. Display it. Display it. They're, they're, they're gonna the, be really cool. And the reason cool. sports cards are is because you take a selfie and put it on Instagram. We love to flex. I'm waiting to understand the flex of of the NFT and as soon as I understand it. It's coming. Oh, I'm the least confused of all time. I'm curious what it's gonna be. Yeah. I wanna invest in it because it's gonna be the sh- shovels and picks of that world. We, we have a, we have a, uh, uh, Galaxy Interactive Fund uh, that's invested in forty. That's the name of it. Galaxy Interactive. What are you? We're all about the Galaxy. Star. We're more Star Wars people <laughs> than too. Star Trek people. Me too. I see the Boba Fett. Big <laughs> shout out to that. Rito is underrated. And but we invest in forty companies in the gaming space, video, yep. new worlds. Yep. Uh, in probably a third of them, they're already playing with these things. We are no question, because we're now 30, 40, 50, you know, year, depending on how you want to look at it, years into the modern internet, really 30 in my opinion. Um, it's the biggest technology that's ever happened in the history of life outside of things like fucking fire and like the printing press is the one that I keep going back to. Television, phone, fine, but this is like printing press 10.0. Yeah. Every piece of our life is Every, changed. It, correct. And, how we, and, have, correct. How we meet people, how we elect, elect officials, you know. Everything. 50% of People today meet their spouse online. That's crazy. There's a lot of people who don't want the world to change. There's also, 
because I know where, how people are gonna take that line. There's a lot of people that want the world to change that are gonna be highly disappointed what the world looks like. <laughs> That's true. Mike, why would Russia, China, and America allow crypto to happen? Well, there are two pieces to it. One there is an unbelievable efficiency gain. And so if you think about it, banks are rent takers. Yep. Stock markets are rent takers. Insurance companies are rent takers. And so crypto at its core cuts out the rent taker. That. It's peer to peer. I know. Right. That. And so if you're thinking for just efficiency gain, uh, good for your people, if you care about your people, What's funny, the progressives get nervous about crypto. It's the most progressive thing on the planet. A hundred thousand percent. But I tell you, the progressive politics, they're like, well. Well, listen, that that's only just comes from lack of education. Lack of education. Yeah, that's all. One of my missions this year is to sit it's down so with funny, right, to your AOC point. And, to, and the squad yeah, to, and, and to, to, literally educate them. It's like, dude, you've got to be on the team of the, the crypto people. But people just, we're so used to headlines now. People walk around society feeling very comfortable talking about shit they don't know. Yeah. It's well, that's why, the one it's thing why you I notice, come on here and I'm like, I don't know how brokerages work. I'm comfortable saying I don't know Wall Street. I don't give a fuck. The only reason I even have any stock is because my co private investments went public. Other than that, it doesn't make me happy. I think it's very logical to invest in it. I also think real estate is logical. I don't invest in that either. It doesn't make me happy. But baseball cards certainly do. Happy as fuck. <laughs> Specifically basketball. How much TV do you watch? Very little. I figured that. You just feel like you're at least going to I spend going, almost going. all my time consuming people. What my people will tell you is that's what my great gift is. That I'm, re you know, it's funny. I'm, I talk a lot. I'm sure people that listen to your podcast are like, get this fucking guy off. He's talking over Michael. I get it because I'm so rarely talking actually. But everybody thinks I'm always talking because I'm so good at content creation and distribution that I'm everywhere. But it's not, it's in a very limited window. Like, uh, you know, I do a podcast. I'm going to get like 8,000 pieces of content out of this. <laughs> but I'm really spending 15 hours a day operating and listening. You two know this. But like, you know, so I have a very, I've come to realize I'm a really interesting enigma. Like I'll spend three hours in one subreddit listening. Interesting. I'll spend four hours in a Discord listening. I'll spend years in Twitter and Instagram reading just the comments. I knew more about Cardi B before I'd even listened to one of her songs because I was li listening to people conversating around. And that's how my brain works. So I like learning from documentaries. I love history because I use it, hence, where, the, where did the printing press come from? The fact that history was the only class I was good at in, in my entire educational life. The fact that most of the TV I watch is documentaries. I like using history to tell me the future, and then I like being in the dirt and putting in the work to listen, to take the data points and filter it through history for the future. And that is where my success comes from. How do you unwind, ever? Do you ever unwind? I unwind, the New York Jets allow me to unwind tremendously. I'm being dead serious. People laugh at this, but caring so much about something that means nothing is an incredible so way they to say, unwind. So they, they, they say, they say there's, there's studies that say rabid sports fans have better mental health because they get all their anger and all their shit out by screaming at the goddamn horrible team they're rooting for. So I need to do a little homework on that studies, studies, because I actually think I understand the world through the lens of a Jets fan. Let me, let me explain. I struggle hating people, including right now when it's easier than ever for people to hate each other. But I hate Bill Belichick. <laughs> <laughs> and I really actually feel it. Like when I go to Foxborough and go in the stadium, I, the things that go through my mind are the things that people call each other in politics, but in politics I would never do that. So I'm irrational in sports because it doesn't mean anything. And then I, think about people being irrational in life because it means something. And so I'm like this bizarro reverse. I'm mm -hmm. my worst self in football and basketball. Have you ever been to a UK soccer game? I have and I love that shit because they're my people. <laughs> it's just crazy. Because they really care. I think American sports fans don't care enough. Yeah, they care. They care, you know, like in the UK, they, like s football, soccer, soccer right. as we say it, around the world speaks to me a lot because they care the way I care about the Jets. I think in America, we have a slightly healthier macro relationship around fandom. I just don't. Like I, I go to a- So like, you, you like, the, the, no, I, well, I love got, they have the, the, no, the well, chain link I, fences no, between the two- I'm the, the least confrontational person, believe it or not, even though in video, and I'm, but in real life. But I like wanna physically fight. Like I, I've done the least nice things that I know about myself have been done at Jet football games the last 10 you years. You could be a good Philadelphia fan too. I, do you know that I genuinely love Philadelphia sports because of it? 
and we both hate the Giants. I went down with one of the the, the owners of the Giants, uh, one of the sons of mm -hmm. the owners of the Giants, when we were working 15 years ago. We had Giants jackets. Mm -hmm. He gave me this beautiful Giants jacket. We'd flown a helicopter down. We're walking through the stadium parking lot, and a cop says, dude, you should take that off. And I said, what are you talking about? I'm a wrestler. He's like, take it off. And I was like, what? He's like, take it off, cop, big cop. So I took it off and carried it in. And, and Same thing then, then I under, I'd never seen that. Then I understood what they were talking about. By the about. way, I have this, Lou Geno, if you're listening, Raiders playoff game, Chad Pennington, that year we go to Raiders, we're in our Jets jersey, cop goes, take the jerseys off. I'm in my combat fucking war zone mood. I'm like, no. <laughs> and I looked at him and said, officer, I'd rather die. And I wore my jersey. And it got scary, to be honest. <laughs> it was some scary ass shit. I wasn't as tough as you. I took that Giants thing and wrapped it up. I wasn't I'm even that big of a Giants fan. I'm literally tough nowhere. You can punk me, society, you can punk me anywhere except a football stadium. I will, I'd rather die. All right. Nobo, so I do this thing uh, called overrated, underrated on Instagram where it's my just personal opinion in the macro, if this thing, and you could obviously take a million angles on it, is overrated by society or underrated? Paris Hilton. For me, underrated. Because, and I'll tell you why. She understood a lot of what's going on right now. Way in advance. What's that? Way in advance. She, Correct. She, she kills So it. that's why I would say, somebody else would say she's over. Like She's also nice. I'm aware. So here we go. I'm gonna throw some words. Your yep. team made some words. I may throw a couple of my own in here. So Kenny, fire away. Bojangles. Bojangles. Oh, most Over underrated brand in the world. Next. That's, that was self-interest. We don't do that on my show. Keep going. Wrestling. Though, you're right. Wrestling. Underrated. Wrestling. Underrated. Why? Toughest sport in the world. All the MMA champs started as wrestlers. It builds grit, builds character, and you're never scared to get What about fight. professional entertainment wrestling? Love professional wrestling. Why Just, is it underrated? You know, it's underrated because the theater of it, it literally it's changed entertainment. It changed professional agree. sports. Couldn't Vince McMahon. 100%. Genius. He's like Walt Disney. They just don't realize it. Yes. On steroids. Correct. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> Blockchain. Blockchain. Blockchain's underrated. It's going to have its day. It's starting to show in 15 years. The interesting thing is you won't notice it. It'll be the back of the fucking TV. Yeah. But it's going to change the world in a really positive way. I agree. Uh, Reddit. Reddit. Well, I'm learning about Reddit real fast. Uh, like, all, you know, Reddit, all these forums, I think, are... Complicated, uh, you know, they're, I'll give it underrated because it's having a huge impact on the world and it's gonna probably have a bigger impact, but they're complicated in terms of how do you edit through to get to Yeah, the but I think one thing that people are missing is that these forums, whether it's 4chan, Reddit, or a Facebook group, Discord, it's just the internet. Yeah, These are just right. platforms on top of it. Fair point. You will not stop people from congregating on the internet unless you regulate the internet. You can block Parler all you want. You can block Reddit. This is why the point I made They all earlier, go to Signal. <laughs> you know, there's, there's somewhere to go. But, but the question is, but governments can stop it. And I think people don't, that's where it gets- I don't think they will. I think there, well, there, is, a, there is an that's, ethos that, in our country that, that well, runs through of freedom well, listen, and- Well, listen. Like, we're not China. Right now, we have both sides. You had AOC and Donald Trump Jr. and Ted Cruz, even though they then fought each other a little more, agreeing on something. Let, no, no, in a big way. No, no, I really need everybody, listen, really agreeing. And I think that's an important insight to everybody. A politician in America is playing defense 24-7, 365, right? They, have, they are constantly decision-making strictly on the behavior of winning an election yeah. that's in front of them. Pure and utter defense. And even the smartest fuckers I know I've been able to destroy because I'm playing offense and they're playing defense. And that's the problem. That's a good way to end. I gotta go. All right. I love you, Nova. Hope everybody liked it. Thanks, Gary. YouTube watcher, what's up? It's Gary V. First of all, thank you so much. I hope you're doing super well during these times. Uh, I also want to ask you, please subscribe because my commitment and exploration of YouTube is about to explode. Stories, polls, more content, more engagement, more surprise and delight. This is the time to subscribe. I hope you consider it, and I hope I see you soon.